Rest in the Lord. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wait patiently for him. Right. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, mm -hmm. because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Mm -hmm. Cease from anger mm -hmm. and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil, for evil doers shall be cut off. But those that wait upon the Lord, yes, they sir. shall inherit the earth. Yes, for yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yet thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. Uh, ten verses in your hearing of the word of God. May the word of God find a resting place in your hearts and soul and comfort you in times like these. I want to talk from the subject, how to deal with wrong when it's overwhelmingly strong. How to deal with wrong when it's overwhelmingly strong. We live in a time where we accept right for wrong and accept wrong for right. We live in a time where the rich keep getting richer and yet the poor keep getting poor. We live in a time where racism is almost acceptable where well, it's almost like a normal thing. We live in a time where injustice is everywhere. Where children are being abused by cruel adults. Well natural disaster is taking lives of good and bad people. Well, fires are just coming out of nowhere, being caused by lightning. Floods on every hand, storms throughout the land. And look like the harder you try to do good, the more wrong you see all around you. It look like the more righteous you try to be, the more persecuted just seem to be. It just seems like that we're in a time where Rome is just overwhelmingly strong. But David looked at that and, and, and David saw the situation that we see now. And, 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 and David thought about it. Why? Why do the wicked prosper and the righteous suffer? Hey, why the wrong seem overwhelmingly strong? Well, 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 in these first two verses, David gives us a bit of advice. He says, uh, uh, fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and weather as the green herbs. So, and, uh, in this here, as David gives us some advice, David had to learn patience. David had to learn how to, to wait on God and understand that God was still in charge and that God didn't bring him this far just to leave him alone. Because Paul said in Romans 8, 25, but if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait on it. It's not going to happen overnight, but you just have to wait on God. And, and, and David said it in Psalms uh, 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 27 and 5, wait on the Lord and be of good courage, and, and he shall uh, strengthen your heart. And man, David understood the prophet when he said, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings of an eagle, run and not get weary, walk and not faint. David understood that every now and then you have to have patience, and have patience, and he cried out, I patiently waited on the Lord and he inclined unto my cry. And no matter what's going on around David, he understood that only God can change the situation. And, 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 and what David is saying to us, don't, don't fret over the thing that's going on in the world. Don't, don't lose your mind 
man. And don't get depressed, amen. I, I see so many people, even young people now, are finding themselves depressed and, and suicidal and in hospital because they don't know how to deal with the wrong when it's overwhelmingly strong in their life. But, but David here, when he looked around and, and understood that if he be patient and wait on God, that God will work it all out for him in due time, amen? And so Jesus said, let me give you uh, three things. I, I've given you some advice, amen, not to fret, amen. I, I told you they're going to soon be uh, cut down, amen. I, I, I told you they're going to wither like the herb, but why are you trying to deal with it? Uh, uh, the first thing you need to do is, is follow verse number three, but it says, I trust in the Lord and do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Listen to what David is saying, amen. Even his son Solomon comes along and says something similar in Proverbs, that third chapter, and that fifth verse. He said, trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean back to your own understanding, in all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. You gotta trust God when you're broke. You gotta trust God when you don't feel good. You gotta trust God when it's seems like the world around you is falling in. You gotta Oh, I wish I had somebody who understands what God is saying. 
But when you don't know what to do, you do what's right in your heart. Right. See, David was a man after God's own heart. Out of all the mistakes he made, but his heart was right with God. If you do what's right from your heart, when you don't know what to do, God will step in because you made one step and almost there, you made one. God will make two. You just do what you're supposed to do. And if you just commit it to the God, commit your ministry to him. Commit your life to him. Whatever you do, the scripture, do it wholeheartedly as unto the law. Even when you go to work, be on time and do an honest day at work. We're trying to steal time. Come on, somebody. When you commit it to God, that commitment is in everything you do. And you can tell people who are committed to God. The people committed to God, they don't really complain. Because they know God got it worked out. Now when you really commit it and you turn it over to God, why are you complaining about it? You couldn't fix it no way. If you were, if you were fixing, you wouldn't even be complaining. You just go ahead and do it yourself. Oh, we complain because we're not committed to God. When you committed to God, you don't think negative. Because we just believe there's nothing too hard for our God. And if it's committed to God, why would I look at it in a negative fashion? That's why it's hard to deal with negative people. It's hard to relate for me to negative people. Because God is not a negative God. Satan is negative. God is a positive God. God is an up God. You're going up to Shiloh. You're going up to Jerusalem. Oh, I wish I had somebody. You may go up to the temple.
up on what else. But we got a God that doesn't change. He's going to be holy whether you be holy or not. He's going to be righteous whether we be righteous or not. And for me, I've decided to give everything I've got in the following way. to let this stuff that go on around me get me perturbed. I, I, I said too much to let this stuff ride and to get me depressed. And I'm like the Hebrew boy. Even if he don't, I know he's able. I know that. Nobody has to tell me. I know for myself. And you know where he bought you from. You know how he kept you. It's the enemy trying to throw you off because he know you have but a short time. And all of us are under attack some kind of way and sometimes it gets rough. But I continue look to the hills so what's coming all of my help. Church. And the fact that we were just able to come back in one more time. 